Hey guys, Triggermeister here. I'm here to show you today on how to install a Clark Custom Sear Spring. Uh, this sear spring actually has uh, four fingers or four leaves, and uh, it's it's an awesome sear spring. But it takes uh, a little bit and a little know-how how to fine-tune them. So. Um, especially if you want to get a light reliable trigger pull so stay tuned first thing we're gonna do is uh, disassemble this 1911 alright so here she is uh, disassembled and uh, it already had a four finger leaf spring in it but it has uh, when it comes from the factory actually it has a lot of curvature to the to the spring to begin with so if you leave it like that you're gonna have pretty hefty trigger pull I'm sure it's due to the lawyers and uh, I'm gonna actually utilize the same sear spring just gonna adjust it and I'll show you a picture and a video of it a little bit later on but before we even get to this part uh, we're gonna actually start with the sear itself so before we even try to adjust anything, what I usually do is I take my Brownells sear jig and uh, I uh, chuck up the sear inside of it and uh, then I uh, take it down and uh, make sure that the geometry is uh, correct. So even when you buy the sear, you know, even when you buy high quality sear or sears in general, uh, you know they all have a little bit different geometry and I found that with the Brunel sear jig I get a very consistent cut on it and uh, it works very well so I've used it on anything from uh, cheap sears to uh, very expensive SV sears so here we go okay so I put the sear in the sear jig and uh, you use the uh, the pin right from the frame to secure it and then on top of it you have a 20 thousandths spacer which I use in which I bump up right to the sear and then uh, let's see if I can get a focus on this well if you can't see it what needs to happen is uh, I have to remove that excess material from the top and the spacer ensures that I only take enough off of the uh, the sear to uh, to make it to make it right so I'm gonna do that this video is not about uh, cutting the sear with the Brunel sear jig so um, if you need advice on that I'm sure that there's a lot of them out there on YouTube so look those up now and uh, come back when it's uh, time to adjust the four leaf Clark custom sear spring all right and we're back so here is actually a factory custom Clark four leaf sear spring and you can see the bow that's in there is tremendous and I'm sure that it's there probably because of lawyers and you know, so essentially to make a to get a light trigger pull with one of these sear springs, you, you're going to have to take actually most of it, if not all of it, out. So here's the one that I'm actually starting to work on, and uh, I use my little trusty uh, orthodontist tool, and I pretty much straighten out the first spring, and the first one is for the sear, and uh, I'm going to go a little bit further. I'll try to make them almost flat. And uh, with your gun apart, reinstall your sear and your disconnector. And our first job is to only focus on the sear. So you can see where it engages the sear. And then the middle one engages the disconnector, and the left one engages the bow. So, all right, I'm 
going to do some more adjustments and I'll be back. All right, so here I have the sear spring installed. I have the grip safety out and I have the slide back on. So I think I got the sear spring right about where I want it. Um, I'm going to take it out and uh, show you guys some of the potential pitfalls. So when you're looking at the sear spring, you got to unfortunately do a lot of bending. So the first one, the sear, the, the, the leaf that engages the sear, you want to make sure that it doesn't contact the sides. So in this particular gun it doesn't. Uh, in a couple of 2011's I've seen where it's touching the sides. Then the disconnector spring, which is the second one from the left, uh, it should be fairly centered. Uh, hopefully I can get some focus on here. It should be fairly centered on the disconnector. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's off, way off to one side, take it and bend that leaf more towards the center. And then the last, well, the second to last one, engages the trigger bow and it should always engage the trigger bow but it shouldn't really engage anything else so you know if it does make sure you bend it either properly or trim it up maybe a little bit and then the last one is just a standard grip safety leaf which yeah, it really doesn't require a whole lot of changes so I'm gonna show you this so you know pause the video or do what you need but this is what it looks like bent properly. So you can see that the sear spring is almost flat. Then the disconnector spring is a little bit forward of the sear spring. And then the trigger bow spring is even further forward. And then the uh, grip safety spring is bent back, of course. So, and you can adjust that to your liking too, so, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how stiff or how loose you want your grip safety, so that's up to you. So, this is what it looks like. So, the next thing we're, well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble the gun with this, and then I'm going to dry fire it, measure the trigger pull. Oh, there was one thing that I didn't show on the video. And uh, one thing that you always want is a trigger gauge. Even if it's just a cheap one like this RCBS, I've used it for just about everything. It only goes to um, four and a half pounds. And uh, I actually uh, maxed out the, the trigger pull gauge when I originally tested it. So I know it was either at four and a half or just a, you know, maybe a little bit over four and a half pound trigger pull. So, all right. Stay tuned, I'm going to reassemble. Oh, uh, let me, a couple last notes. Always check for burrs, okay? There's going to be burrs on just about everything that's machined. So unless uh, you got it super clean from the factory, you know, just clean it up, take a little stone to it. I took my uh, little fine stone here and cleaned up the edges a little bit, cleaned up that you know if you want to take a thousand grit sandpaper to it or a super fine stone you know be my guest you just don't want any burrs so if you feel anything with your fingernail take it off it doesn't belong there so all right but now I swear to god i'll uh reinstall it and then uh, we'll measure the trigger pull all right so here we go um i uh installed it one thing I do is I kind of uh, loosely or temporarily install a lot of things just to test it. So what I did is I just took an Allen wrench, put it in place, easier to pull out than the pin. And uh, this gun actually had a, uh, um, a, a safety, an ambidextrous safety. And uh, I just used one of my other safeties that I have laying around. So, because uh, that's much easier to put in and uh, to check function with and then take out. And once it's all set, then uh, you can finish the, uh, finish putting it back together completely. But 
We're going to measure the trigger pull right now. So here we go. Uh, one thing that you don't want to forget is you got to push the grip safety. Otherwise, you're going to max out your your scale here. So let's see here. Oh, and you want to make sure that the uh, manual safety is not engaged. There we go. That was about a, about a pound and a half. We'll try that one more time. 16. So that was about two and a half pounds. I must have. screwed something up here let's check for consistency here. yep just under 40 ounces so three times the charm yep so I must have had something must have been touching the trigger or something all right all right well Time to finish uh, the reassembly and uh, go test fire.